Hi friends, welcome to Smart News Digital. Let's have a discussion for the date 5th of September 2018. Today in our discussion we are going to deal with four topics. Today's first topic is Google to help election commission to track online political advertisements. You all know that in recent times political parties are taking different paths to reach people during political campaigning. Digital advertising is one such method used by political parties during election campaign. Google, a digital giant which controls a lion's share of digital advertising market is going to have tie with election commission in order to tap online political advertising. A committee that had been set up by election commission to explore possible modification in section 126 and other provisions of Representation of People Act 1951 in view of the expansion and diversity of media platforms. As I said earlier, political parties are using different platforms during election campaigning. So having in mind, election commission is exploring the possible modifications in section 126 of Representation of People Act 1951. So this company, which is Google, would keep track of political advertisements and ensure that they are pre-certified by the election commission's media certification and monetary committees. That means that political parties give advertisements through digital medium. For example, I may belong to a political party and wanted to give advertisement through digital medium. So Google would ask me whether my advertisement is pre-certified or not. The election commission is the nodal body for pre-certification of advertisements of political nature released by either an individual or an organization. You all know that candidates contesting in elections have a limit of expenditure. That means that beyond a limit they cannot spend money for elections. Google also assured that it would set up a mechanism for sharing information on the cost of political advertisements. So Google would be tracking the advertisements given by various political parties. So it would also calculate the amount spent by political parties. So it will share the information with election commission. So it will be very useful for the returning officers when it comes to calculating the election expenditure of individual candidates. As soon as someone is declared as a candidate for any election, all the money spent by that person for campaigning gets added under the heading of election expenditure. The election commission also asks the candidates to declare their social media accounts so that it can track their campaigning and the expenditure it is incurring through advertisements. The committee that had been set up by the election commission had meeting earlier with Facebook. Facebook also agreed to develop tools for removing any content pertaining to election matters during the 48 hours period when the prohibition protocol is in place. Today's second topic is drugs or not sweets. Depoy, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson company, engineered a hip replacement device. This has been the news for quite some time. This hip replacement device, commonly called as Articular Surface Replacement or ASR hip implant. This particular device soon turned into toxic. It is due to release of metal debris into the body and resulting in inflammation and tissue damage and profound pain. The patients who went through this implantation also experienced inflammation, tissue damage and profound pain. Doctors began warning this company as early as in 2005 itself. In 2005 itself, doctors were warning that this particular device are turning into toxic. But this company did not hear this. Court testimony suggests that the doctors who brought this particular issue into repeated attention of Dupe were ignored. That is, their advice has been ignored or doctors who brought this issue into notice had their research funding cut off. In fact, Australian registry took this issue as far as in 2007 itself. So DeepY clearly had knowledge of this problem very earlier. But still, it issued global product recall only in 2010. The worst thing is that it renewed its Indian import license in 2010, just few months prior to the global product recall. This particular company is well aware that this particular implantation is creating huge problem. It is turning into toxic. So it is going to have a global product recall. But still it renewed its Indian license which is a cause of concern. It took a full three years for the Indian drug regulator, Central Drug Standard Control Organization to wake up and issue a product alert. The patients who went through this implantation also lost their jobs, mobility and much more.
while this depoy company reimbursed victims for their revision surgeries that is to replace metal with other materials such as ceramic and polyethylene but they refused to compensate because of the improper implantation they had to go again the surgery that means revisiting of surgery in order to deal with the issue so the cost is incurred here that particular cost is paid by this company this is reimbursement this is because of the company's fault they are paying but the compensation is not given what is compensation this particular company had to pay to the patient for the pain suffering disability and loss of work for the faulty product produced by this company let's consider the first lawsuit that went to trial in the us against this depoy where the jury awarded approximately 8.3 million dollar as damages more than half of this amount went for compensation only and less than 50 percentage went for this reimbursement despite having knowledge of high failure rates this johnson and johnson failed to issue prompt warnings and take appropriate remedial steps of late indian government finally constituted an investigative committee in 2017 only its report shows that depoy's attempts to evade responsibility let's see an example for its irresponsibility While 15,829 ASR hip implants were imported in India, only 4,700 surgeries were performed. The worst thing is that only 1,295 unused implants had been returned when this particular company called for recall. Where did the rest go? That means that there are certain number of ASR hip implants that were not performed and they are not returned also. They went missing. is it not the responsibility of johnson and johnson to ensure that the recall is properly implemented and to account for all the missing pieces is a question mark unfortunately the drugs and cosmetics act that we have is inadequate when it comes to victims compensation how the act problematically presumes that even a device to be a drug and it penalizes all those who sell the drug which are adulterated in nature spurious and substandard so under this act we cannot punish this company we all know about this bhopal gas tragedy and its consequences when it comes to india these poor hapless indians are used to so much worse than their developed country counterparts what it means when accident happens compensation is given in foreign countries or developed countries when it comes to india sometimes they don't even give compensation Very strangely the government is lacking courage and confidence to deal with the issue it even blocked a potential CBA inquiry despite a former drug commissioner recommending this particular CBA inquiry this is a well established fact that because of the faulty design and product many patients were suffered and it is the duty of the government to take necessary action and penalize this company but why it is still hesitating to the action is a question mark Pharmaceutical companies which provide medicines for health of the consumers have a special duty. They have the responsibility to produce proper goods and they must ensure that the health of the patients are primary importance than the profit. But however, nowadays a corporate and financial goals of such companies cloud the decision of its executives whose decisions are incentivized by profits even at the cost of public health. Profit is the primary motive of many corporates and companies this has to change the attitude of these companies have to change their primary intention should be to ensure the health of the consumer not to earn profit alone today's third topic is addressing soil loss we all know that kerala have been witnessing unprecedented rain floods due to which it lost crores of rupees worth material life loss etc and even karnataka witnessed heavy floods The obvious consequences would be the loss of lives, the devastation of infrastructure and the crops which are cultivated is all apparent. Now it is the time to rebuild the infrastructure that have been devastated by the rain floods. But when it comes to rebuilding, when it comes to planning of rebuilding, what is often ignored is the soil that has been washed away. We do not give importance to the soil as much we give importance to the infrastructure. While roads and houses will be rebuilt, and crop losses compensated partially through insurance schemes like pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana and the gradual loss of soil productivity can have a lasting impact on the local economy soil degradation due to 
Flooding is a serious concern, but it often fails to attract the attention of the government. A 2014 review of soil degradation in India shows that an estimated 14 million hectares suffered soil degradation due to flooding alone annually. In 2009 also, a study was conducted to understand the impact of floods in northern Karnataka, which killed 170 people and caused an estimated loss of 16,500 crore. Researchers from the National Bureau of Soil Survey and Land Use Planning and other institutes estimate that 13 flood hit districts lost 287 million tons of topsoil and soil nutrients across 10.7 million hectares of farmland. When heavy flooding occur, we lose nutrients such as nitrates, phosphates and iron. It would cost around 1625 crore, while another 853 crore would have been spent on replenishing organic material. So we have to spend considerable amount of time and steadfast program of recovery needed to recover and replace the soil that have been lost due to heavy flooding. A soil profile of few affected districts shows that these areas having a shallow or very shallow soil depth and organic carbon deficiency and low productivity of land. In the case of Kerala and Kodagu, the undulation and force of water would have led to severe soil loss and land erosion. Soil is not formed in overnight. It has taken thousands of years to form through natural processes and through recent inputs given by farmers. This particular valuable soil is being swept away and are dumped in reservoirs and in the sea. All floods are not bad for the soil, as seen in the often occurring floods along the banks of Ganga, Kosi, Brahmaputra and other rivers taking birth in the Himalayas. They bring loosened alluvial soil and not only washes over farmlands but also replenishes flood plains with fertile soil. When flood comes in the Himalayan region, it brings alluvial soil which spread over Gangetic plain and benefits farmers. But in South India and Central India, the consequences of flood is different with respect to soil. Because in South and Central India, floods wash away rich and weathered soil which are deposited in reservoirs or as sandbars along the river bed or in the sea. In Kerala and Karnataka, we are busy with rehabilitation program and relief program, but when it comes to proper rehabilitation program, soil has to be given its due importance. This last soil has to be replenished and replaced. Today's first topic is Breakthrough Achieved in RCEP Claims India. RCEP countries covers approximately half of the world population and 27% of global trade. This regional comprehensive economic partnership countries include 10 ASEAN countries plus 6 which includes India, China, Japan and Republic of South Korea, here Australia and New Zealand. A commerce minister said that RCEP discussion would not end in 2018 itself but it would spill over to 2019 also. According to him, this 16 nation group accepted some key demands from India on differential tariff regimes for different country groups like China and in allowing 20 year implementation period of the agreement. He also said that package of substantial deliverables would be agreed in November this year but not the preferential trade agreement which has been negotiated for more than 6 years. India along with RCEP members are negotiating this preferential trade agreement but it is not getting its final shape and coming to implementation. RCEP stands for Regional Cooperation in Economic Partnership. It is not goods partnership alone. Economic partnership envisages that services must be integral part of the trade. So this linkage that has been accepted now according to Commerce Minister. India is performing very well at the service sector. So India wants service sector to be included in the agreement and its all its provisions. But other countries are fearing that if service sector is included in the agreement, India would get undue advantage. India wants to have separate negotiations with three countries, they are Australia, New Zealand and China. Because with these countries, India does not have free trade agreement. So India says that it cannot negotiate through RCEP route with these three countries and it wants to go through bilateral pairing mechanism and wants to have separate negotiation. This new understanding at the RCEP grouping is a significant change from the past because in the past when India was seen as the outlier in the group. 
Why India was seen as outlier in the group is because India is having a different demand, a separate demand that is include service sector in the agreement. But others don't want to include service sector in the agreement. But now it is in the acceptable stage. Thank you.